Alright, I'm going to put this other quarters on the wrist. I feel like his arms and wrists, he's going to have, um, you know, sleeves, but I want his arm to exist underneath the sleeve. So I'm just going to wrap this around his forearm. They're not super skinny, they're very muscular. So when I get to the wrist, I'm going to turn around and go back. And then the rest of it will build up with gray. So garden gnomes, that's the whole thing. Oh, garden gnomes. See, those aren't, those aren't. That's not what we're talking about here. Garden gnomes freak me out, first of all, because they often don't have mustaches, and I think that's just bizarre looking. Oh. They were originally made in Germany, and then it spread through Germany, France, and England, wherever gardening was a serious hobby. Now, controversy. They are the target of pranks in many areas. Mm -hmm. People have been known to return garden gnomes to the wild, so they get kidnapped. <laughs> Free the garden gnomes. Do they like it? Do they not like it? All right, I need to look at my notes at this point and figure out what I do next. I think we're gonna want our, you've got some gray core. It's the core that you have the most of, probably about 36 inches. And we're gonna wrap um, the pants, the boots, the arms, and the body with it because it's a nice medium neutral color and everything else that we put over it will work and look good. Oh, feet, body, and arms. Okay, I didn't do the legs with it. I did the legs with the gold. All right, let's start there. Back it up. You've got some um, gold core. So take about a six inch piece, split it in half lengthwise, and just start at the waist and hip and go down the leg and back up. So not quite to the ankle because he's going to get gray boots, but we just want to get this on here so that we can then so about there we can turn around and head back up what else you got there Milo well here's the controversy part okay Gnomes have been banned from the Chelsea Flower Show and other serious gardening circles in the UK. <gasps> They're like no well, gnomes. Well, they say here. they detract from the garden design. They, However, they think it's too kitschy. They think it's too cheesy. The gnome enthu many gnome enthusiasts. It, it seems to be more popular in the working class. So gnomes have been banned. Yes. So the the people who like them say the Chelsea Flower Show organizers are, are snobs. snobs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this is, there's a whole controversy out there. Totally. Okay, now I'm gonna take some gray and do the same thing, about a six inch piece. This is a chunky core, so we need to break it down a little further. So I'm gonna split it in half and then I'm gonna split those in half into quarters. So we'll work with quarters of you know a five or six inch piece this is probably started out more like five inches so on the foot i'm going to start just under the knee we need to wrap the heel and the um toe so when i come around i'm going to hit the heel but just keep keep going in the the same direction. You'll find a flow. There's not like a set. Um, so I can hit the heel 
and then I can come back around the ankle, kind of like the way we do um, when we have a, when we want to fill in a corner. And then I can come this way and do the front of the foot. And then I can do that here and fill in. So you're kind of trying to fill in this corner and fill in this corner. And that's a technique that we do all the time. Very useful. This is where, you know, we say it's an intermediate project because you gotta have these things kind of under your belt. Otherwise I'm, re you know, kind of starting all at the beginning. So I'm gonna come down turn this in a way that makes sense to me. Hit this corner. And then come and get the front of the foot. And then do the instep side of things. Getting my own light here. Is the light okay? Should I go get a light? I feel like I'm I, making shadows. I feel like you just started making shadows, but it doesn't look any different. Maybe okay. just the way the okay. sun's moving. I think it's okay. okay. Then we want to do that. Um, not the whole thing again. I'm going to wrap some wool around just the, um, the leg part and then maybe also just the foot part. So I just want to, I'm going to hold my finger and thumb here so that I build the wool up without letting it slip up the leg. Like I really don't want it to go past this inch of boot height. You've been wanting to do gnomes for quite some time. Yeah. Is it lunchtime? It probably is. My stomach's growling. Don't be a slave to the amount of wool that you pull. It's too much to get rid of it. It's not enough, add a little more. You are the master. <laughs> he looks crazy. <clears throat> all right, I like to build things all to the same degree. In other words, I'm not going to finish the boots when I don't even have wool on the rest of it. So I like to kind of get everything up to, up to the same level. Um, so I want to get a little wool on the head and neck. So I'm going to take a six inch piece and split it in half lengthwise. Okay. And just go around the neck a couple times. And then come up here. Go around the top of the head. Go around the chin. You can do a little X in the in this fold. It's a little awkward because it pushes me the way that I don't usually wrap. <clears throat> Get that all stuck on there. Okay, and then let's take the second piece. And 
this time just go around the head around and around the head start to get that wider details on this is the face the face yeah otherwise it's pretty easy, and the clothes right? and the hat <laughs> yeah uh, it's this is this is a this is an elaborate project it is not a begin you know it, it's borderline felting university project really now we're going to go back to the gray core and I want to get the body built up a little bit so I'm going to take a six inch piece Split it into quarters. So this is our chunky core, so you would quarter it, whereas yes. our other core... I usually have it. Yeah. So I'll come down this arm. And then back up. wrap my le left side with my thing facing me and his wait a minute his right side with him facing me and his left side with him facing away from me that's just me so all my things probably have some sort of energetic torque <laughs> they're going to explode someday 20 years from now I'm going to need bigger pieces for the body. Actually, I'm going to hold off on these other two uh, six inch pieces that we pulled, and I want to get a nice, sort of long eight inch piece. Uh, let's split this into thirds because we're just going to wrap the body here, and I need a good amount of wool. So Ooh, he's wide. Go around the waist, and then come up over a shoulder. And then you go around the bottom of the rib cage and then come up over a shoulder. So you start to crisscross to start to fill in this big space here. He's pretty flat right now. So flat. Except for his head. And we need to make a nice big belly and I always think I'm making the belly so big and then they're just, they don't look very fat once I get all their clothes on. So make your belly bigger than you think you need to. The other thing I want to show is that I don't build up the waist. Let me see if I can, who can show it better here. He's still really skinny at his waist. So it's all belly and gut underneath here because if you just made him like super thick all in there he wouldn't be able to sit and bend and stuff. So he needs this to stay skinny. So you'll notice as we go that I don't pile wool on right here. All right, so we're gonna do that again, over a shoulder, around the base, and over the other shoulder. Kind of like using the facets of this rib cage to still have one of those thirds. I'm just going to keep it here. And I'm going to go back to these um, six inch pieces that we had. And what I want to do is I want to start on the body. I want to wrap the upper arm and shoulder and then return to the body on the other side. So if I were right-handed and I didn't turn my critter over, my dude, I would start on the body, wrap the upper arm and shoulder, and return to the body. That was a right-handed wrap, people. Oh, man. 
daddy strong. <laughs> He's growing into his hands. He's growing into his hands. Let's take this last piece and just go around. around his chest and it's a little awkward because the the wire's so tapered the shape is tapered but you can do it you can do it just keep that wool up okay so to make the belly well, before we make the belly, I want to build this area up a little bit more. So we've got our gold core and we're going to build up the butt and hips a little bit. So I'm going to get a six inch piece. I'm going to split it in half lengthwise. And what I want to do is kind of figure eight to start to build this up a little bit. So if I go around a thigh and then across his butt and then around the other thigh and then this time I'm going to go across the front and then around the other thigh and then across the butt and around the other thigh. The merino would be really fun. The merino pre-felt would be really fun to use to make like baggy little knees and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, then this piece, uh, well, hold on to that. I'm gonna, the next thing we wanna do is make two triangles and that makes a little, a little butt and a little front. <laughs> Like, like all diapers. <laughs> yeah. So we still have this amount of um, gold core, the whole, you know, the whole piece. And we want to make um, two triangles. So I would start with kind of like a nice two inch square. Make the butt one a little bigger. And the front one a little smaller. Try to get more like a, you know, this is probably more literally two inches but that's like a healthy, a real healthy two inches. <laughs> um, and then you're just gonna draw, so have it horizontal, and then I always just stab the center line so I can see that I'm gonna be even. And you just wanna draw a nice sort of 45 degree or right angle, 45, 45, 90, uh, triangle. Don't stab too, too flat because we want this to create some dimension. So just make the shape, set that aside, and let's do a little bit smaller one. Okay, so the big one goes on the butt. And here you can give them like a little bit of a kind of droopy, droopy pants. It's not every day you get to sculpt butt cheeks. Right. And I'm not like pressing it all flat. I'm letting there be, I'm kind of actually puckering it and just let the fringe come over the hips. And then the front one. This one you can make not quite so droopy. <laughs> He's got to have room for his bits and pieces. <laughs> and his pants. Just think about impressing all the gnome ladies out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now 
we can split this piece in half. This was a half of that eight inch piece, I guess. And then we can do kind of like what we did to the shoulder. What, what, what? Lay down. People talking, it's... Start on the hip, go around the upper leg, and then end on the hip. I don't want a ton of fringe here. It's just to kind of bring the pants together with the, the leg together with the body. It looks more like pants and less like a diaper. Yes. Don't get them too hippy. Okay, so we just start there. I'm gonna move up like two. Sorry, that's okay. Go around the leg and then return. Do we need a name for this wrap? Yeah, you do it like on everything. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that, you know, these steps are part of the process. The other part of the process is sculpting by stabbing. And so you're making little decisions when you stab. I'm getting a kink in my shoulder. Oh no. Shoulder. I think I'm too low or too far away. Okay. He's looking like something. Getting there. Now that I have this, I, I can put this big belly on. And basically, you want to fold a big belly. I mean, you can just, you can just fold sort of like two inches of core wool several times. You're probably gonna do this more than once. So let's see, that was like an eight inch piece fold it over two inches. Just a nice soft pillow. And then this time I'm gonna put it this way. So I want it to kind of flatten out as it comes to the chest. So I'm gonna let that sort of taper and blend. But then down here, I want it to be poofed up. So I'm gonna come at it this way a little bit. Remember, I wanna leave this not felted. It's kinda of like when we did the owl and we leave that neck so Free. the owl can spin his head around. Yeah. And then just come around the sides a little bit here. Kinda of stabbing that pillow around the side a little bit. Lots of room in that thing. What, because it's so loose? Yeah. Yes, so you need it to is do a soft. good bit of... Yeah. Well, I'm going to wrap it, and that's going to hold it down. So I'm going to put a piece around the whole thing. See, he looks like he's pretty fat, right? But then you kind of do the rest of it, and this just sort of goes away. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to wrap it and then put more. I think I know I want more. So I'm going to take like another six inch piece and just fold maybe a slightly tighter pillow and I'm going to put it down towards the bottom here. So I put a second pillow on. <laughs> Again, stabbing up from down here so that it doesn't all attach and it can't move. All right, now, can you see how yes. huge he looks? <laughs> I have about a nine inch or eight inch piece of gray core left. So I'm gonna split this in half lengthwise and I'm gonna stretch it out you know what, Milo? What? I think I was supposed to use off-white. I was supposed to use oatmeal on the boots. Oh. I know. Can 
when you I still have enough. Still do the top? Yeah, I still have enough. But when we make the video, if there's a way to say use oatmeal when I use gray. Oh. <laughs> now I'm going to wrap this whole thing. Just go around. Just going to help hold it on there. If people were smart and watching the video before well, they actually start. you know, that's why we do these things. <laughs> or if I had re totally re-familiarized myself with what I was doing here today, because I haven't made one in a month or so. I, I will add text that says, do not listen to this woman. <laughs> she, she doesn't know what the heck she's doing. I am your felting father. That is the belly. I hope it holds up. Meaning, doesn't get squished. Looks like a belly when we're done. This is exciting. Look how far we are. So, we have tunic to make, boots to make little fun knee folds face hat done done you're like Piece of cake. 20 minutes out yeah so what we what I was just saying was that I should I have all this oatmeal <laughs> <laughs> the reason I have all this oatmeal is to make the boots so this wrapping that I did in gray um, I should have done an oatmeal but I'm going to continue the boots using the oatmeal and they'll look great and they'll look great so I'm going to use a six inch piece and I'm going to go ahead and quarter it because this is a kind of a refined little area. I don't want to be trying to deal with a great big chunk of wool here. So I want to get a little bit more on the foot before I do the final boot shapes. So I'm just going to get go around the top of the leg here and get that oatmeal-y. Don't want to add too much more bulk. And then I want to get this um, instep um, built up a little more and then get the end of the toe built up a little more. So I'm just going around the end of the toe. I can't do the heel wrap again. There's not enough space there and it doesn't need it. the most famous gnome detective. Basically what I'm trying to do here. Uh, hold on one second. I'm sorry. No, you're trying, you're to, like trying to teach people. <laughs> Can I use your pencil? <laughs> okay. So the foot shape armature was like this. What, what we don't want to do is have a foot like this and then just like wrap it like that. Like just all like that's not good. It just looks like a big worm folded at a 90 degree angle. What we want to do is build up this triangle, build up this triangle, and have something that looks like that. That's what you're going for. Then we're gonna make a toe cap ghost that will come, almost like when we make a muzzle on an animal, it'll come over the toe and give the toe, and the fringe comes back this way. And then we're going to make a taco, and that will go around the top, and the fringe comes down this way. So then you really get that boot look. Okay, sorry. Why? Who to what? Who oh, to what the? Thank you. Um, what is the name of the most famous gnome detective? I'm trying to think of a pun on Sherlock. I don't know what. Well, you're already there. It's just, it's Sherlock Gnomes. Oh. <laughs> My brain couldn't just, just couldn't go that much <laughs> further. And the rest, I just want to go around the toe here. Sorry, I know this isn't the most useful angle to see, but I gotta... 
I gotta felt it right. All right, this is a fun little step now. We're gonna finish the boots. We're gonna have one finished little part of our gnome. And that is to take um, two two inch pieces of oatmeal. And then if you've got some oatmeal fringe, like kind of this, this much, get some of that Angora. <gasps> so pretty. And blend them together. Just pull and stack and pull and stack. And you end up with this glorious, fuzzy, fibery mess. It's about half and half, Angora and wool. Okay, now we're gonna make our ghosts or our tacos, I gotta look and see. So you get this kind of heathered, fuzzy, wonderfulness, wonderful poof. Let's make our ghosts. This is a little, little bit much. Um, I don't know how to show this. This one's just right. <laughs> this one's a little bit much. So watch and see the shape and where it goes and then you will kind of understand what we're after. Now, I'm gonna put some of my fuzz on top. Then I'm gonna flip it over because I want the fuzz to end up on the outside. So find my center line. And then I'm gonna draw a ghost a little wider than my thumb. Uh, maybe a little bigger than a quarter, or about the size of a quarter. So fold the top over, let the sides come in. Let me show it maybe in relation to the Zuli tool. It's uh, about a quarter inch off each side of the Zuli tool, so about an inch and a half wide. Nice and round. Now I can take away a little bit of this fringe here. So where it's gonna go is over the toe. And we want all of this to felt basically to what would be the ground. So on the sides and on the front. And you can even give it a little bit of foot shape by letting the big toe stick out further than the pinky toe. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. The fringe just comes back on the foot. Now this is just quite a bit of stabbing, so I'm gonna actually set it aside because I wanna go ahead and make my other piece while it's fresh in my mind. I put some of the fuzzy floof on top. Flip it over. Draw the ghost. Get to lift out of your surface when you're working directly like this. Okay, then put it over the foot, center it, stab it down, make sure it's hanging off enough that you can shape it all around the bottom of the foot. Okay, so I have a lot of shaping to do. I think I got this one a little bigger than the other one. This is just stabbing, <laughs> you know, like, and I know you can't see very well. I'm trying well, to. we have that belly that's protruding yeah. as well. I'm trying that's to get way that better. little bit of that kind of angled foot Okay, I'm gonna stop there for now because it's just a lot of stabbing. But the next thing we wanna do is make a taco that the rounded edge is gonna be the top of the boot and the fringe is gonna meet the other fringe. 
So this piece. This guy I glued a little piece of cut out leather to. It just helps flatten the foot and it does help them stabilize them and let helps to let them stand if you're going to um, try to make them stand independently. It's not in the kit because we couldn't, uh, we didn't want to get into a sourcing leather, but um, it could be, I mean, it could be anything. It could even be a piece of fabric could help her. You want to show the gnome that doesn't have them finished? Right. That's he doesn't. Look, it looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just felting. He's just wool down there. But just another step you could do to, just wanted to share it. Okay, so now we need to make two tacos, and they need to be wide enough to go around the leg. So I think they're going to be about two inches wide. So we want another two inch piece and two inch piece, but this time we want them to be vertical. Like two inches square. I'm just trying to get a little bit off this one. And we're going to put the fluff on it. If you don't have enough, just mix more. But I have enough. I'm going to flip it over. And I don't need to put a noodle in here. It's just not that big of a piece. Um, it's just more getting that rolled edge that's going to be good. And I also don't need to do it right in half. Um, it'll get pretty thick. I can do it kind of maybe two-thirds towards the top like a third of the way down. And then this you're gonna wanna hit with the punch tool to really felt it pretty flat. So before I make my second one, I'm gonna check that this is a good, good fit. I can pull a little bit of this fringe off. So I've got this nice rolled edge. I can narrow that, refine that a little bit. Don't want it too bulky. And then I want to put the center on the front so that you don't see the seams. They're gonna, the seams are gonna overlap in the back. So just let one side overlap the other and then it is a lot of stabbing just to shape it to the foot. So just keep in mind not to use like way too much wool, but there's a lot of fluff here that needs to be stabbed into, into shape. He's got his little Uggs. <coughs> Except they're even better because they're rabbit fluff. They pluck the rabbits in the spring and the rabbits really like it because they're all itchy and mm. shedding. Because the gnomes, if they're lucky, they find a snow hare. And then they help them shed. Uh, and then with the fluff. All about who you know. Yeah, with the fluff, they felt their boots. Can you start to see, start to see it? Yep. Now he's got boots to match his hands. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna make the other one. Oh, are we rolling now? I'm rolling. <laughs> I'm talking to the camera that's not even on. So I've just been stabbing and shaping and, the, and they'll get even more. Um, but that's what it is, you know, when you put these little pieces on. I wonder, I haven't done it yet, but um, it'd be fun to make boots with the pre felt mm. too. All of, all of these, all of these steps. But this is cool because uh, we are going to make a, um, a pre felt video and this will just give you another way to do things.